afternoon club. These are my helpers, Rose and Mummy and Georgie. Hello, welcome to the afternoon club. Today we are going to make salt dough, which is a really simple dough you can make with ingredients you'll probably have in your kitchen. And all you need to cook it is an ordinary oven. So let's get started. So first up, you'll need some plain flour, or to be honest, any flour that you've got in your kitchen will probably do. And you'll do. need a measuring cup. You'll need a measuring cup, yes. You'll need some ordinary salt, and you'll need some water. Oh, and then put the water in the bowl, then that's done. Then we're going to put them all in the bowl. So first thing we're going to start with is our flour, and you will need two cups of flour. So George, let's measure that out. It's like snow. Is that much? Keep going until it spills to the top. Mm -hmm. pour, pour that cup in and then we'll fill up another one. Once you've measured up your two cups of flour, then it is in with the salt. So George, can you measure up a cup of salt for me, please? Like this? Yeah, just lift it and pour it in. That's like snow. Okay. Perfect. Here you go. <laughs> oh, <I have> water. <laughs> no, not yet with the water, Rose. Next, we've got to take our spoons and mix the salt and the flour really well together. It's gonna be great. Oh, it is. Ready? Pie. Pie. Sugar. Sugar, you pies. Yum, yum. Good. So once you've got your salt and your flour well mixed together, then you can add the water. Just add a little bit at a time, because um, you don't want to put too much in, and give it a good stir until it forms a nice dough. Okay. Right up to the top there, Rose. Right up to the very top. That's enough. Stop, stop. Let's stop. I'm dirty. No, you have to keep doing water. I think we've got enough water to begin with there, George. So, Rosie, give it a stir as well. Okay. It's yucky. Yeah. It's like a giant swamp, isn't it? Look, Rose, I'm going to grab some. Look at that. Ew. This is getting even yuckier than I thought. After a while, it'll come together to form sort of dough. Then you'll need to get rid of the spoons and get your hands in and get a bit dirty and knead it. So George, can you start kneading for us? I'm done with me. Yes, you can have a go after Rose. So get together all the wee crumbs that are in the bottom of the bowl and mix it together. Why can we not do it together and roll it together? You can have a go, but there might be too many hands in the bowl then. So once you've your dough all mixed up, you can put it onto a floured work surface. We are just using at the back of some kitchen chopping boards because they're nice and smooth. And then you'll need some rolling pins and you'll need some cutters as well. So let's get started rolling this out. Keep squishing. Roll the dough until it's about half a centimetre thick and then you can use your cutters to cut it into different shapes. Oh, baby, yeah. We're using some spring shape cutters because we've been learning all about spring in our homeschooling projects last couple of weeks. Ah, pink butter no. I made a mummy. so easy to get out. Its ear was stuck. This one is out. 
flat shapes work best because the dough is quite fluffy so anything 2 3D can fall apart a bit. A heart fluff. If you really want to make a large 3D sculpture you could try using tin foil to act as a base and that might help your sculpture stand up a bit. If you want to make your decorations into hanging decorations, then you'll need to pop a little hole somewhere before you bake it. So you can just use a pencil and then make a little hole. Do you want to make a little hole in there? If you want to add texture to your designs, you can try rolling things like doilies or fabric or even bubble wrap into your dough and then cutting out your shapes. Okay, now peel it off and let's see if it works. It worked! Did it work? Oh, it did. You can use things like knives, forks and spoons to make all sorts of shapes into your dough. These ones look a little bit like scales or fur. So once you finish cutting out all of your shapes, then you can get an adult to help you put them in the oven on whatever the lowest setting your oven has. I think mine is about 50 degrees. And then you're going to need to leave it in the oven for upwards of about three to four hours. Now you can always turn the oven off and leave it while it's still warm and just leave it overnight or even it's really sunny at the moment. You could pop it outside in the sunshine to finish off hardening. And when they are hardened, they'll have turned a really light color and look quite white and then they'll be ready for painting. So that's what we're going to do now. Let's get started. Before you start to paint, make sure that you cover your table with something. Old cereal boxes or newspapers work really well. We are using ordinary poster paints to paint our decorations, but you can use any paint that you've got. Once your decorations have dried, put some string on them or ribbon and then you can hang them up. There, it's the same, it's the same. This one hot enough. I'm going to do the mummy one. We're going to put it at the very top. Is it sly in the oil? Oops. Here. Oops. Here. Sit back and admire your handiwork. <laughs> 